All right, what is up my crypto fam? So today I'm bringing you a follow-up to my last video on Gridbots. In my last video, I explained what Gridbots were and how you can use them to recover from red bags that you've accumulated during a market crash. If you haven't seen that video, then please click the link for it in the upper right hand corner before you continue with this video. Today, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into a couple of technical aspects of how Gridbots work. The first is showing you how you can edit your grid bot lines and what effects that actually has on the grid and the bot itself. The second is a method that I use for calculating my grid bot profit, or at least calculating my current standpoint in my grid bot based recovery strategy. As always, this video is not financial advice. It is for educational purposes only, and you always need to do your own research before investing in the volatile crypto market. So let's get right into editing the grid bot lines so you can see the changes that you can make and the effects that those changes have on the grid bot lines themselves. So here I am looking at the previous uptrend on the Filecoin USD one hour chart. And we're currently looking at three commas AI strategy settings for this grid bot. I'm just going to switch over to the manual strategy settings so that we can actually edit it ourselves. For example purposes, I am just going to round out these numbers to 155 and 55. So here we have our grid. We need to, you know, edit it to make it a better fit. In the last video, I gave you the strategy and details for how you want to make the grid match up with the price action on the previous uptrend on the one hour chart for a coin. I'm not going to go over that in this video, so go back to that video if you need that info. Right now, I'm going to show you how the grid changes as you change the upper limit price, lower limit price, and grid quantity. Let's say I wanted to bring all of the lines of my grid up overall. I have two options. I can raise my upper limit and or raise my lower limit. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to slowly increment this upper limit price upwards from 155 and let's see what happens to the grid lines. So 156, 157, 158, 159. As you may have seen, the lines were a little bit higher each time. Now I'm going to do the same for the lower limit price. So let's go to 56, 57, 58, 59, and well, 59. So there you saw the lines also move up. If you need to move your entire grid up, you would move both the upper limit price and the lower limit price up. If you want to keep your lower limit price the same and move all of the other lines up, you can simply raise your upper limit price. And now what happens if you want to lower the lines on the grid? Well, it is exactly the opposite. If you want to lower the lines, but leave the bottom at the same place, you would simply just edit the upper limit lines or the upper limit price. I'll make some more drastic changes here. Let's go to three. There you go. You saw that those lines jump down. Let's go to 150 flat and those lines jump down again. Let's do the same for the lower limit price. Let's bring 59 to 56. And you saw the upper limit price stay the same or the upper limit stay the same, but the lower limit and all of the other lines went down a bit. Let's go to 53 and they went even further. 50 and they go down even more. And so let's say you want to bring the lines closer together so that they can match the smaller spikes and dips more accurately. Well, you would use a combination of what I just explained. To bring each grid line closer together, you want to bring the upper limit price and the lower limit price closer together. So you would raise the lower limit price and lower the upper limit price. Just make mental note of where the lines are on the screen now. And I'm going to raise the lower limit price to 65 and those jumped up and now I'm going to lower the upper limit price to 140. So now all of those lines are closer together and if we scroll down here we can see our grid width is 5.95 to 11.36. In my opinion for a grid bot based recovery strategy that grid width is too high so we could continue bringing our upper limit price and lower limit price closer together to get those grid widths to be smaller However, we can also change our grid quantity. So if I change the grid quantity from 10 to 15, boom, we see a massive difference in the grid width. It's now down to 3.82 to 7.61%. If I increase this more, let's say to 25, then we're down to 2.23 and 4.58. And I'm not saying that this is a good setup for this coin. I'm just showing how changing these numbers changes the grid itself. I hope that helped you out a little bit. 
Now I'm going to show you the method that I use for calculating my GridBot profits, or at least finding out where I stand in the GridBot based recovery. I have two screenshots up right now. The top one is my Zcash DCA bot deal, and the bottom one is the Zcash GridBot that I went through in the previous video. Some people like to cancel their DCA deals when they start a grid bot, and I do that sometimes. However, sometimes I like to keep them running and just change them to trailing take profit so that the coin is available to use for the grid bot. And so I have the DCA deal here just to see, okay, if I didn't start the grid bot, I would be X percent down, which is very useful for the calculation that I'm about to show you. We know based on this top screenshot that if I were to just close the DCA deal at market price right now, if I still had my 14.9916 Zcash, then I would be in a pretty huge loss of 44.81% or $1,763. Yes, this was a pretty big deal. And if we look at the GridBot screenshot, then we'll see that it's telling me I have $149 in profit. So how I like to calculate my current standpoint is I like to see what is the total value of the GridBot plus the profits that I have gained from it. In order to do that, it is very simple. I'll just pop open the spotlight here to do some calculations. So what we have to do is we have to add the value of the current amount of Zcash that I have plus the amount of USD that is locked into the grid bot in limit buy orders and add the profit that three commas has told me it has made to that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I will take the 13.056 Zcash that is currently in the deal and I will multiply that by the current price of Zcash which we can see right there. So we'll do 13.056 times what it says in the grid bot which is 144.85 and we'll put that in parentheses to that we will add the USD that is locked in the grid bot which is 258. I will also add the profits from the grid bot which is 149 and change. You don't really need to go into the decimals like I did there, but you know, why not? And from that we get $2,299. And I'll just go ahead and open this in the calculator. So we have it right here for safekeeping. And now how does that compare to if we never ran the grid bot? That's really what I like to find out. So that would be my initial investment minus my current losses. So for that, let's do 3,929.35 minus the 1,763.28 that I am currently down, and we get $2,166. So if I never ran the grid bot, the value of all of this would be $2,166, but I have been running the grid bot, and so the value is $2,299. To calculate the difference, we'll take $2,299, and I will subtract the 2166 that we calculated from the grid from the DCA bot, excuse me, and that gives us a difference of $133. So through running this grid bot, I have recovered $133 of the $1,700 that I am down in this deal right now. So in my opinion, this is really quite great. Not that much time has passed and I've recovered $133 of my red bag and as more time passes i will recover more of it i will track the zcash usd pair and make sure that i am editing the grid bot when necessary to maximize those profits if the zcash price drops significantly below my grid bot lower limit then i will lower that lower limit and adjust the number of grid lines to accommodate for those new price levels my hope is that there's significant volatility as zcash recovers that will help me accelerate this recovery for example if the price jumps way up to let's say this 151 level and then drops back down to 141.4 back up to 151 back down to 141 and does that you know a few times that's really nice volatility that i will close a bunch of deals and will put me in a better recovery standpoint so i hope that these simple calculations can help you track and analyze your grid bot based recovery to the point where you are significantly in profit if you have any questions about these calculations or editing the grid bot lines please do leave a comment and i will make sure to reply to you and if you like this video please give it a like and hit the subscribe button so that you can get all of our content in the future and i will see you soon peace